A champion of our community calls Great Falls the center of the universe, and we're not going to argue. Coming up on this episode of We're No Damn Experts, we're talking with the executive director of the History Museum about Great Falls' interesting and diverse past. Best damn podcast, the best damn town. You want to get up, get ready to get down. Welcome to the greatest damn town in Montana, Great Falls. I'm Rebecca Ingham. And I'm Shanna Newth. And, and we're, we're no, no damn, damn experts. experts. My voice was clear up until then. Like, <laughs> it's like you were really, this was like these dramatic pauses that she was taking. Yeah. So, Shannon, Hello. is it just you and I in the podcast studio today? Oh. <laughs> well, why no? No, it's not. This is a perfect opportunity for her to stop and get a drink is what that was. Yeah. <laughs> no, we are excited today. We have uh, Christy Scott with us. She's the executive director of the History Museum, which is, okay, I should clarify. Is it technically the Great Falls History Museum? No. Or the History Museum, no, right? No, no, okay. neither. Neither one. Oh, it oh is, okay. We are formerly the Cascade County Historical Society, but we do business as the History Museum. Yeah. Okay. So is your title executive director of the History Museum or of the Cascade County Historical Society? I use both just okay. to keep you on your toes. <laughs> yeah, um, I introduce it first. It's really the the History Museum as presented by the Cascade County Historical Ooh, Society. That sounds very fancy yeah. when you say it, it that is. way. Very yeah. showy. Yes. Everyone knows how to present things well. Yes. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. And Chris, you have a lot of experience um, working in museums, working with history throughout our community here. How long have you been... I'm just going to refer to it as the History Museum, if that's okay. Perfect. How, how long have you been with the History Museum? I am um, just over three years, actually. Okay. This past oh. March was three years. It's passed by really quickly. You know, in some ways, the pandemic really slowed things down. Mm. And in other ways, I feel like it really sped them up. Either yeah. that or my second child, who is <laughs> almost three. Almost. <laughs> it kind of mixed my all goodness. together. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. and I think the pandemic. Oh, were you going to say no? Something? Okay, keep going. <laughs> Do your I was thing. like I'm going in another direction. You might. I'm have just going to sit here okay. and partis- be a viewer. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, what was I? See now, I let you ask your Sorry. question. No, you ask your question. So before the history museum, <laughs> you're a big. I'm going to say art nerd, a big art person. Like yes. you have infiltrated the art scene in this community for quite a while. So before the history museum. Rattle off your credentials. <laughs> okay, yes. Um, well, I finished a master's degree at Montana State University in 2009. But before that, five years before that, I was interning at the Russell Museum on their Big Bison exhibit. So I've been at the Russell. I was there for almost five years working on that exhibit. In between degrees, I would come and go and they'd hire me back to work on projects when I could come home from Bozeman. But as soon as I graduated... Well, Actually, several months before I graduated, the Ursuline Historical Foundation hired me for grant writing um, to help get their building repaired and um, give it uh, an extension on its life. Hmm. And then from there, I went on to serve as the curator of art at Paris Gibson Square Museum of Art until I took the position five years after that at the History Museum. (laughs) So um, I guess my message to anyone interested in a career in museums or history is not only that Great Falls is the museum capital of Montana, but also um, you need to be flexible. You need to, um, it's good to develop different talents. Of course, being a fundraiser and a grant writer (laughs) might be primary, (laughs) um, but there's also um, a lot of different types of museums and fields you can work with. And I think I'm a great example of how you can work with contemporary art, but you can also work with history. Yeah. And in addition to all the museums you've worked at, you led the Museum Consortium, which is a local group here of all of our museums that come together to try and make art a more art and culture a more focal point for our community yeah that is an important group we um have 10 museums and cultural centers we actually now have 11 because we just allowed the great falls public library um specifically because of their genealogy program Mm. and then also the montana room which has so many rich resources and they do regular exhibits so 
absolutely a place to research and learn about central Montana and Great Falls in particular. And the library too now, not just talking about the the historical part, but they have the beautiful mural on the outside as well of Alma Smith Jacobs uh, on the outside of the library. So that really brings in the artistic component to it as well. It does. And she's a fabulous historic figure Mm -hmm. from Great Falls who um, really pioneered locally women in the field and a woman of color in the field so I think that um, Alma is an incredible inspiration and absolutely a part of our local history and how neat to see her on the outside of the library. Mm -hmm. When you walk into our office you'll see a black and white cut out of Charlie Russell. Did you see Mr. Charlie greeting you on the way in? Hard to miss him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he freaks everyone out. Yeah. Um, and one of the ideas I had had before we got our mural pr- painted on the wall here in the office was I wanted to have these historic figure cutouts that you could, <laughs> that as like an art installation where you could step into and be part of this huge lineup of all these historic figures. And the staff at the time was like, eh, that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. <laughs> I think that's weird. And I'm like, I think it's a really solid idea. But I wasn't of, part of the staff no. at this time, just saying I haven't weighed in on this. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things that became the determining factor is how much time we would have to spend explaining who each of those are for our tourists, mm-hmm. because they wouldn't necessarily be as familiar with like what Paris Gibson would look like or what Alma Jacobs would look like. And they still think Charlie is like um, Roy Coyote Rogers. Or, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. like, yep. So yeah. who's that guy? I know him. And I'm like, that's Charlie Russell. <laughs> I like, don't think you know him, but hopefully you will now. <laughs> yeah. No, second nature for us great Falsians. We yeah. all know Charlie and love Charlie. But yeah, you're right. The town is full of rich characters <laughs> yeah. that um, we all could. So step in the into. future, there could easily be cardboard like cutouts of, of there. Yeah. many other people throughout the building where you could just take pictures with them and learn a little bit, which I'm looking forward to. Rebecca's going to put a cutout of herself in that lineup and see <laughs> if anyone notices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, she's been a figure here for how many uh. years have you been with Great Falls Tourism? eight years now? Wow, mm-hmm. that's With awesome. tourism. And a long time, uh, uh, not a long time, I'm not trying to yeah. make it sound, you know, I'm getting old, old. but you have <laughs> you have extensive <laughs> experience in the Great Falls area too with uh, business and development and yeah. things like that beyond tourism. Yep. So thank you for being such a cornerstone in the art community yes. for, for as long as you have. So the History Museum, uh, obviously we are, you, we have people from Great Falls who listen to our podcast um, and we're hoping our goal is that people outside of Great Falls are listening to. You um, people in Ohio, yes, yeah. come on down. Come on. So we, you, you mentioned how we have 10 now, 11 um, museums, Montana or Great Falls being the museum capital of Montana. Uh, obviously places like CM Russell Museum, Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center tend to be high on, on tourist lists, but there's a lot of rich, interesting history about Great Falls in the area at the History Museum. Why is it a good place to add to the list for people who aren't from this area? The must do first time list. Yeah. Well, uh, first, I'll just start off with the Ozark Club. I mean, Mm, if you haven't been to the Ozark Club, it is such a beautiful space that really embodies the spirit of a jazz club that was once located on the south side of Great Falls. Pre-civil rights movement, um, a black couple owned this club, and people of all creeds, colors, um, religions met and enjoyed music at the Ozark. And so we have an incredible exhibit there, but we also do our own jazz nights once a year that are phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I've been to one of those. It's a blast. And the room is just beautiful, too. It's a wonderful Stunning setup. Stunning room. Yeah. And I'm just going to dig a little bit deeper into the history of the Ozark mm-hmm. Club because it had like amazing, what we would call top 40 artists today. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That would show up in Great Falls to this club just to play. Yeah, well, you think about how um, a lot of folks were traveling by train back then and, you know, you'd stop in Minneapolis or Chicago and maybe they'd be on tour headed to Seattle. So Great Falls, in a way, we were on their way, but it did take some effort to get here because, let's face it, it was the best damn town (laughs) even back then. (laughs) um, Plus, we had the military base, which brought in folks with different tastes in music, and it really got quite the name for itself. 
So world renowned, Mm -hmm. just like most everything else (laughs) in our city. Yes. And so we love that exhibit and it's a Mm -hmm. permanent exhibit. So you can come and see it any time and learn about Leo Lamar, who owned the club and um, all the different musicians that played with him and some of that history. And I think it's kind of it's neat to shine a light on black history in Montana. I think it's a bit overlooked that um, a lot of the cowboy culture, there were lots of Hispanic and African-American wranglers and cowboys early on and we don't talk about that a lot so it's exciting to have that at the museum Mm -hmm. well there is a miscon a wrong notion misconceived notion that there is no diversity in montana and even though the diversity in our community is maybe not as drastic as other communities or there's not as much there is diversity here in our community and you look at what we were what we were built upon too a lot of things but you go back to the the ozark club and the rich history here of that i mean that's what our community was founded on what a lot of our, our buildings and experiences and things like that grew from today absolutely and um you know i went to college in bozeman i lived in missoula and i feel like great falls is much more multicultural than either of those cities. Uh, We have the largest urban Indian population in Montana, and um, it makes those museums that celebrate Native culture that much more important. Mm -hmm. So I'll make the plug again. I've made the plug numerous times to Chairman Gray of the Little Shell Tribe. (laughs) We want a a Little Shell museum, a Mm. story about the Little Shell Indians in our area. And I know that it's on their radar, but... Gerald Gray, if you're listening, another plug I'm here for to it. help. Yes, I, I think we need it. I think you're absolutely right. Um, it makes a lot of sense. Um, James Parker Shield mentioned to me not long ago about a American Indian Hall of Fame museum, and yes. um, I think something like that would fit perfect in this museum capital here mm. in Great Falls, and yeah. fit in well. And we'd welcome them to the consortium also. Absolutely. <laughs> there, an open invitation. There you go. All kinds Start of opportunities You're here. right in the door. That's all you have to do. <laughs> so, you, oh, Just go ahead. speaking about um, the uh, Ozark Club and yeah. Jazz Night, I was saying we have this annual celebration. Well, coming up in September on the 23rd, we're bringing this Hallie Loren trio. Um, even though she's from Eugene, there's some Montana roots, and she's <laughs> playing with two Great Falls brothers, um, oh. Rob and Lee Kohler. Lee lives in California, but Rob still lives here. And so they're um, forming this trio. She's an internationally acclaimed um, singer and songwriter. And we're really excited about that. And we, last year when we did it, we had folks come down from Canada and from across the state to visit us and said it was, you know, they'll be return visitors. A very worthwhile Mm. experience in the Ozark Club. Or do people still have an opportunity to get tickets for that event? How do they, they do that? They do. Okay. Um, you can call the History Museum at 406-452-3462, or we're really easy to look up on the web. Type in Great Falls History. Our website would come up, and you can go that route also. And we sell about um, 180 tickets, and I think we've sold 40-some. Oh, okay. Great, so there's still plenty of time. Yes. So, folks... We are well connected in this community. Christy gave you the information on how to get tickets. You can also go to visit greatfallsmontana.org. Go to our events tab. Uh, You'll find this event listed. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to claim the acoustics Mm -hmm. in the Ozark Club where this is going to be is phenomenal and Mm -hmm. you're going to want to hear jazz in that building absolutely i agree and you know we don't actually advertise much for it because we do sell out Mm -hmm. um i said we've sold about 40 tickets but we have another 40 going out with table sponsors and they go pretty quickly um as the month goes on and it is a beautiful place to listen to jazz we have these big garage doors that open up Mm. um, to the river and the railroad track in the back so we open those up to get the fresh breeze coming in and we're gonna have food trucks and um, end bars doing our bar and it's just gonna be a really great time and it's the mood in that room Mm -hmm. and the acoustics just really make it So the History Museum, which we've not really laid out yet for you listeners, is um, a traditional museum that has exhibits that are there, but they have, it's, I would say the Ozark Club exhibit as part of a separate area of the building that's all connected. 
but you can go anytime Monday through Friday, Tuesday through Friday. <laughs> and here's the curveball: the second Saturday of each month. There okay. you go. And you can go through these exhibits. It's absolutely phenomenal. And then you have these unique opportunities like the jazz night and other events that happen throughout the year to take in a little bit more of that experience. And we we're spoiled because with the history museum, we know so much that is contained in that building, but there's very hard to put out on display everything that you know about in this area. Things like the ferrying mission, the Berlin airlift veterans, um, documentary that you have in the gift shop. Yeah. You've got the Fort Shaw Indian girls basketball team information. I mean, All of these pieces of our history that have either been on display or are still contained within that building, but maybe not on display. Yes. Are so like, how does someone just tap into that knowledge? Just book. I want to book a private hour with Christy and you tell me the stories. (laughs) Well, Cascade County. Yeah, you can, you can um, book a docented tour with a private tour. If you had a group that was coming in and we've done several of those this summer with folks coming through. But um, something we haven't talked about yet is the research center. And Mm -hmm. you're referencing the seventh ferrying group and, you know, the Anaconda Mining Company and Fort Shaw and the barn and Monarch Nyhart. And then just in town, the downtown business district has such an interesting story. And um, you can make an appointment with our archivist and work in our archives. We have over 10,000 historic photographs and tons and tons of special collections. And what those are are... Um, a closed stack resource, which means they're behind a closed door. An archivist accesses the stuff you want to research and brings it into our research room. So, I mean, there's personal correspondence, there's diaries. Not long ago, we got um, like 70 letters between a mother and her son during hmm. World War II. So, wow. Um, Troy Housel recently um, did some research in our organization about the parks and trees of Great Falls like why were there so many trees here and what was planted Mm -hmm. and um, how we really set the stage for the rest of the state with green space and an urban forest so the topics are rich they're varied that's actually what brought me back to Great Falls as I was in Bozeman looking what should I research Um, there was so much in our region that isn't written about or well-researched and provided a lot of opportunity as a historian. That archive room is really neat. I've been there when my prior career in news, I've been up there before doing stories. And it's also a great resource because you walk in and if you happen to have, you know, family members or friends whose relatives are from Great Falls, you can, you know, get some nice blackmail photos looking at their old yearbooks, things like that that are in there. We you looked at my husband's seedier, relatives. Yeah. The seedier side of Shannon right there. Well, you know, we house things like the naturalization records for the county. Mm. And I was talking to Bill Salinas the other day and he was telling me how his son used our naturalization records to get his to prove his dual citizenship as an oh, Italian. Wow. Oh wow. And um You know, it's just story after story. And then somebody else at Rotary was telling me about um, the family of George Shanley, a famous architect who lived here. And they came to the museum to research their family history. And we have a huge architectural collection. If you're interested in drawings um, and you want to know about anything from, you know, this open spandrel bridge Mm. on 10th Street that was saved to um, the buildings downtown. Yeah. And we've learned just, I even, I've learned in the time that I've been here from some of our guests, just the architectural history and interesting architectural elements that we have in Great Falls that I think if you live here or spend time here, you so easily overlook them. But even from the Expo Park buildings to downtown, Mm -hmm. we do really have some pretty fascinating or moment in time, moment in history representation, um, of these buildings that are fascinating. We do that North side historic district Mm -hmm. shows all kinds of styles of homes that were built during different eras, the incredible um, complexes of apartment buildings that were put in for when the dams were built. And um, you know, the, 
the AMC was going. Um, yeah. And then again, downtown, the bridges, um, Adobe structures, mm-hmm. like there's everything. <laughs> we, yeah. we've did, we've done it all here in Great we Falls. We have. Yes. Uh, so I want to talk to you about some of the other exhibits. So we talked about the, the Ozark, um, club, the exhibit and the event coming there here later this month in September. Uh, another exhibit you have is about, um, brewing, and beers the and, beer and pass- yes, because and <laughs> no. some of the fun things I see if I go to antique stores here, there was, you know, Great Falls Brewing, these old like Great Falls Great beer. Falls select. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so there's a, an exhibit, Ooh, correct, there it's, about it's the beer. Such a labor of love. Um, our archivist, Megan Sanford, was kind of grew a little obsession that turned into a big obsession about Great Falls <laughs> breweries because um, a lot of local folks especially know about Great Falls Select, but they might not know about the Volk Brewery or the American Brewery. Or um, There were several breweries in Great Falls, um, actually just back behind the hill where we're looking at now. The Volk Brewery was on the terraces there hmm. um, that make Verde Park, and they had oh. German beer gardens. It was a family affair, kind of. You think huh. about breweries nowadays, there's a resurgence, but Great Falls was doing it a long time ago, 1890s. We Take had breweries. that, Montana. Yeah. We were thirsty. <laughs> yeah, we were thirsty and planning that. We had men building Montana, and yeah. they needed beer. They needed and they their needed beer. beer. <laughs> yes. And we're situated right here on the edge of the Golden Triangle, so we grow some of the best barley in the world for making beer. So it's the perfect place to talk about beer. But um, even beyond celebrating the breweries, we wanted to look at prohibition um, with our proximity oh. to the Canadian border. You can imagine there was a lot of illegal transport of mm. liquor. Yeah, which is where we get a uh, bootlegger uh, road. Yeah, right? yes. Yep. From. And so. we have a map of that up. It was, um, and that was a challenging research topic. Our archives are really rich, but when you go to uh, research <clears throat> organized crime, um, it's not recorded. Weird. 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 It's not super yeah. public, huh? So there yeah. was some oral histories and not only um, interviews that I did, but looking at interviews that were done 30 years ago by the History Museum um, mm. that capture some of the stories of bootlegging and um, moonshine making and you know whether it was making your wine over in Black Eagle or um, Mm. your homemade mash for your homemade (laughs) you know bathtub gin yeah boy so a a really fun exhibit (laughs) super creative folk here in Great Falls Mm -hmm. still to this creative with your alcohol (laughs) and then we also have um, an exhibit up that talks about Great Falls legends um, in the sports field so you want to learn about you know Todd Foster and his career in boxing or Mm -hmm. Dave Dickinson and his career as a quarterback and then of course Petrovich who was a figure skater and um, the names I could rattle off a lot of them they go on and on the stories are great Terry Casey so we won't dig deep into this, but is Ryan Leaf part of that? He has a small little Perfect. snippet. Mm-hmm. There we go. That's all we need to say. There you go. And it's more rec- <laughs> it's more recent history too. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Figure. Yeah. In terms of history of the things that are covered there. Absolutely. Yeah. Time we, back. People ask yeah. me that a lot. Like, what makes something history? Right. How old does it have to be? Oh. In general, we collect things that are 50 years and older, but there's exceptions where when you're doing an exhibit like that, you need to talk about the contemporary mm-hmm. or, you know, the decade ago yeah. stars. Um, likewise with the breweries. You know, we talk about the past, but it's easy to bring it up to the present with the Mighty Mo and the Black Eagle Brewery and mm-hmm. Jeremiah Johnson. Yeah. Um, Great Falls loves beer, and the History Museum <laughs> is here to celebrate it. Absolutely. Okay, and another one of the exhibits there is the, I'm not going to get the name, but the miniatures. Oh, it's like buildings. a little, small little town there. Oh, you noticed those? Yes. <laughs> they're hard to miss. They even are, though, even they're though they're tiny. They're small, yes. They're pretty impressive. Yesterday, I had a young gal that um, came down to visit from... Blackfeet country and you know she was just mesmerized by these miniature almost like looking into a dollhouse because you have the structure but you look inside of the structure and it'll be a grocery store and being the history museum this isn't any grocery store this was a grocery store located at a specific spot on first avenue south and we identify which building it was we have photographs from the archives that can show you what it really looked like and then the artist, um, Joseph Dvorak, who is a Czech, Czechoslovakian immigrant who made it over to the United States, made these incredible models. There's eight of them. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, and it's everything from stores downtown, um, like an art store, grocery store, the blacksmith shop um, where Hotel Arvon and the Celtic Cowboy is. Mm -hmm. There's a model of that. Which is the library saddle livery library livery I think livery yeah and then um, the I'm park hotel yeah. <laughs> and the opera house yeah. yeah and that's so is that a specific time frame then that that miniature village is representing it'll probably be oh I think saying how it'll be up Sorry. for another year okay but yes um, it is a time frame okay. it's um, old town is sure. what it was known as and probably no surprise the Bovies. Um, a historic family in Great Falls who was passionate about preservation and started Virginia City. They oh. had a hand in commissioning these models from oh, Dvorak wow. in okay. the 70s yeah. that now live with us. Perfect. Um, what other exhibits are currently up at the History Museum? We have one other big exhibit, and it's about downtown Great Falls. And you can go into it and learn about the banking industry, the service industry, the telephone industry, hmm. a little bit of everything. And then, of course, there's new exhibits on the horizon. That is exciting. I love it when there's new exhibits. <laughs> I also <laughs> like when they in. stay for a long time. But mm -hmm. um, it's always exciting when you get to hear someone else's or see someone else's work of putting together that information to make an exhibit mm -hmm. because there's so much we don't get to know about our community or how things are the way they are now and I just think it's so much better and I know that's bad phrasing but <laughs> I just think it's so helpful if you're coming into a community to get a little bit of a sense of where it came from I mean you can mm -hmm. see it today obviously but knowing all the cool things that happen here it's all at the History Museum. Mm -hmm. It is. And I love that. It's such an honor for us that we don't have to be really focused. We're not just Charlie Russell or we're not just the Ursuline sisters. And those stories are fascinating. And you should visit those museums. If you don't, you are missing out. Right. I, I've traveled the country visiting museums and archives. And I'm not just saying this. Great <laughs> Falls has some of the best resources in the nation. Um, in my graduate studies, I went to the Smithsonian for a fellowship, and I thought, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to go, and I'm going to research about boarding schools and check out all of their um, history on the boarding schools. They're going to have all this neat stuff, and it was a fraction of what's at the Ursuline Center. Oh, and wow. I mean, That's amazing. So incredible, and um, I, I think people overlook that. Um, we actually... Going to the Ursuline Center, not my group, but um, I do love the history there. Um, this was the mother house for the Western province, which was Alaska, Idaho, California, and all of Montana. Their missions to the Northern Cheyenne and the Crow and um, St. Xavier to the Salish Kootenai and St. Paul to the Grovant and the Cinnaboyne. And then, of course, St. Peter's that's close to us. It was to the Blackfeet. All of that um, history is stored in the Ursuline Center. It's wow, fabulous. And the History Museum is in this wonderful position that we can work with them to do an exhibit. We can do an exhibit on downtown or Mary Fields or the Ozark Club um, or beer. <laughs> um, and... Um, and we have a platform to tell yeah. a lot mm -hmm. of stories, and there's a lot of well, stories to tell. Well, and there's so tell. many variety of stories. And I'm just going to interject here because I saw it on Facebook. <laughs> uh, famous composer Phil Auberg mm -hmm. is going to be doing a live presentation mm -hmm. at St. Pete's Mission. Wow. Um, there was a ARPA grant where they did um, Montana composers in the missions creating music oh my connected to that oh, history wow. so you're going to get that. like blackfoot flute as mm. part of that demonst or a, as part of that music and he's going to be performing live one time and if you've ever been out to the mission here oh my gosh what a I'm snapshot RSVP. of history i know mm. yeah i want to be a part of that and that sounds amazing. incredible yeah so i mean that's going to be limited seating because it's well not in a hundred percent great condition. <laughs> There's not a lot of seats out there, right. but no, I'm really excited that those kind of things are happening within our community. Mm -hmm. so. Well, thanks for telling me about that. I wouldn't have known <laughs> right. if I wasn't listening to the best damn podcast. There you go. The there you go. Podcast. There's the plug. And yes. <laughs> if you want to know more about it, you can email us at information at visit And I'll send that information to you just so you have awesome. It. Rebecca, you thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so outside of the history museum, which uh -huh. I will say, if you come see 
see us at the visitor center. It's just down the street from us. It's yeah. a very quick, quick jaunt easy. down the street to that us. That was quick. And vice versa. <laughs> yes. But one of the things you'll notice when you're walking into the History Museum is a nice little uh, mountain goat display there. Oh, little yeah. friends there as you go in. I'm curious what uh, his or her story is. Ooh. It's mountain goat. Well, that goat we call avalanche. And it's actually a sculpture by... Um, Famous Central Montana artist, um, Bob Scriver, who, Mm -hmm. yes, and um, so we were donated that by the Zion family, and we just, he's our mascot. We love having Avalanche out there. He used to um, be above a bar in East Glacier. Uh Ah, that makes sense. Yeah, with us. (laughs) There are so many stories in our community about these amazing art pieces that Mm -hmm. have been in bars. Yep. There, that's a good. That'll be a good exhibit one year that I might do. There you go. (laughs) But this is a yeah. So look for Avalanche as you're driving down the road. That'll be your. You can get a little picture with him on your way in. And good signifier that you're in the right hood. And yes, I love (laughs) our location is so cool. You know, we're right on Machinery Row, Mm -hmm. which. Um, actually the building we're in used to be a tractor implement store, which Mm -hmm. made a lot of sense because the railroad tracks are right there Mm -hmm. and they'd bring these heavy tractors and farming supplies and we'd open up the back garage doors and they'd bring them in. Um, the building is perfect for us with its stout beams, concrete floor, freight elevator. It works great for a museum and archives, but machinery row, you downtown's a jaunt away the visitor center's right up over the bridge so mm-hmm. give us a little bit more details about machinery row is that like the industrial area that used to be great falls it was yeah it was very much um, an important part uh, machine shops and um like i said farmers would visit i mean you'd go to the livery <laughs> livery i i th- I feel like I've heard livery. Okay. The we'll livery go. stable. <laughs> you would uh, park your horse and then um, you'd maybe walk down Machinery Row and be talking with the farming implement dealers and making arrangements. Um, and the street up until a couple decades ago was actually cobblestone. It wasn't paved. It was... <gasps> we should make it cobblestone Wouldn't again. That, uh, that would be awesome. Yeah. I know. I thought that was really cool. I'm sure it's pretty easy to maintain. Yeah. <laughs> we were doing an oral history with David Cameron the other day, mm-hmm. and he told me about that. That Oh, did you realize this used to be all cobblestone? Wow. And there used to be a, a little infirmary down here that you'd go if you had some infectious disease, and oh. that's where you might stay. <laughs> wow. No, I had no idea. Huh. Um, so, yeah, it's a cool wow. spot to be. We're right on the edge of downtown. Mm-hmm. Um, and Great Falls' is downtown has gotten so cool. Yes. It's a fun place well, to visit. Well, Second Street's not uh, no slouch anymore. No. It's not. Mm-mm. And I really love what's happening. If we can bring Cobblestone Street back. Oh, my gosh. How cool <laughs> would that be? They have them all over in Nantucket. And actually, my oh, friend who's yeah. living in Nantucket <laughs> returned home. And gosh, what did we do? We went to dinner at N Bar. Took the kids for colored snow shaved ice. Yeah. Then we had a drink at um, the Newberry. And she said, she, they were talking about buying a home somewhere, um, Bozeman or Missoula. And they're like, we kind of overlooked Great Falls. It's yeah. getting really cool here mm-hmm. again. <laughs> yeah. And now they're back That's looking true. for a spot here because Perfect. there's so much to see and do. Yeah. It's a it's an underrated jewel here for sure. Mm-hmm. Do you have like a favorite piece of history that, you know, that isn't as well known uh, that you'd like to share? And I know that's a tough question because it's like picking your favorite child, which I'm sure you have. Well, when am I? <laughs> I, I only have two, yeah. so that's not fair. <laughs> so it makes it really but awkward if one's she picks a little one. Naughtier. Yeah. <laughs> um, I really love our Sanborn maps, which were something that was put together by insurance companies and um, let us research, like, with the Dvorak miniatures on display. Then we could figure out where each of these buildings, like the Lapeer Brothers groceries and the stables, where they're located through the Sanborn map. So that really is one of my favorite because maps are fun to look at. And when you're looking at streets and buildings and where things are located, I do just love that. Hmm. And then we also, I'm, I want to do a second since okay. I have two kids and two favorite, <laughs> there you two go. favorite kids, That's two fair. favorite museum yeah. things. Yeah. Um, an arrowhead collection that we have from Bud oh, Biznet. Okay. And it's um, all these arrowheads have been found in the area because, of course, there were more than buffalo jumps. There were um, corrals, um, all kinds of methods that were used to sneak up on the bison and a lot of evidence of 
um, native people in what is essentially Blackfeet country, but the Nez Pierce were here and um, a lot of different groups have traveled through. I love that collection. It is hmm. so interesting. Well, I think there's so much. Um, we we often talk about First Peoples Buffalo Jump, and mm-hmm. we've had Clark on the podcast. Um, but there was more than just what is First Peoples Buffalo Jump, like you were alluding to there. Mm-hmm. Uh, James Parker Shield. <laughs> we're just dropping names all over you the sure place are, today. Yeah. James had mentioned there's quite a few other buffalo jumps in the area that nobody even get to see. And then just that this was a natural meeting ground for Mm -hmm. 13 different tribes. The Mm -hmm. things you're going to find here are so vastly different and very by tribe, Mm -hmm. which is just a a cool thing. Yeah. Yeah, There's so many stories. And I think with the confluences of like the sun and the Missouri river and you go not far from here and you can see, were other rivers that will remain nameless that don't have dams like I don't know. I'm talking about the Marias. Okay. We can mention those. Um, it's okay. The Marias, the yeah. Smith. Yeah. Yeah. I there's mean, a lot of options. There's so the many milk. beautiful rivers, but um, you know, we are in traditional Blackfeet homelands, and mm-hmm. yep. off the topic of projectile points and buffalo jumps, I don't know if you saw yesterday we repatriated some sacred bundles to the yeah. Blackfeet. And oh wow. Um, you know, we are in Blackfeet country, and these are our neighbors, not only to the north, but within town. We mm-hmm. have yeah. this urban Indian population. and That is so true. I um, numerous times have visited with some of the leaders at um, Browning uh, for Blackfeet Nation and their tourism director there. And it's just, you know, they, they're... Always quick to remind me, like it's hard to forget. Yeah, <laughs> this is this is Blackfeet territory, and I'm like, I know, I yeah. remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I mean, of course, we're gonna have the museums to reflect that, and um, yeah. every collection almost has a little bit. Whether you're working with the railroad and you're thinking about James Hill and Glacier Park mm-hmm. and the Blackfeet up there, um, that yeah. museum's located at the fairgrounds. Or you're looking at the History Museum and projectile points or the Russell's incredible mm-hmm. collection of ethnographic material that's on display. You can learn a lot about um, First Nations people right here in Great Falls. Mm-hmm. And there's so, mon- so many other stories that are being told and can be told and will be told through the History Museum Um on so many areas we are going to be telling some coming up this fall and this <laughs> Look winter at that transition huh, if wow you, if almost you, like i knew it's almost like there's a big Sneaky. poster in front of you um <laughs> announcing mm. our second saturday programs for the fall um every second saturday of the month at 1 p.m we have a speaker and coming up in september we're going to be talking about cascade county we have a little pop-up exhibit that we put together just to learn more about the borders boundaries of the county and we're going to feature three different communities in the county this time it's milligan san Cooley, and um, vaughn but in october uh we have john Kuntz talking about his journey to freedom he uh, was born in a concentration camp in poland oh, wow have you heard this story no, I thought we were going a completely different direction, so keep going. <laughs> he was born in a concentration camp, and his family, at the end of the war, was sponsored by um, households in the Catholic Church in Cascade County and was brought to oh, the county, wow. and he'll tell his story in October. That's oh, fascinating. wow. fascinating. I know. Huh. So you don't want to miss that one? No. And then the second Saturday in November, we have author Jennifer Hill, who's going to talk about birthing in the West. And I mean, this is everything from mid <laughs> midwifery to birth control to prenatal, postnatal stuff. Um, stuff hot- you don't dig into very much, but was obviously a very big part of what life looked Settling like and would look West. like. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. And, you know, what a topic in this right. day and age with everything that's going on <laughs> right. with women's health care. And, mm-hmm. Well, um, and all the things. I mean, I've watched Westerns. Um, and every time I watch a Western, I think how smelly it must have been oh, yeah <laughs> i mean Always. it's not like you're taking a shower every day no. if you live back in the west There's a lot of you layers got, yeah. not sure how you all these the layers too. you got um you have Dusty. to work so hard you have horses that are sweaty and pooping everywhere <laughs> you don't have indoor plumbing i mean right. just a hundred percent the aspects that you look at in a western where it looks all glamorous uh-huh. i'm like Ew. I just think like, it's yeah, I don't bad. Live like I bet, yeah, I bet yeah. it smells bad there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, we're so used to such a sterile environment. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. So she came into the archives actually and used a couple of our um, 
uh, diaries. And oh. so just really looking at the history of what it was like, what was childbirth like in the West? Oof. So Oof. really neat topics <laughs> and they go on and on. Yeah. So, you know, you're looking for something to do on a Sunday, go downtown, grab brunch, and then come to the history museum. Mm-hmm. We don't keep you long. It's a one hour program. It's free. Yeah. Um, actually, some of them are 30 minutes and you pop in, you learn some history and you go about your day. But yeah. you'll probably want to come back and make a appointment to research in the archives or see the exhibits too which is just such a neat resource to have that anyone can have access to those archives I mean you think about that being like you know Smithsonian level you gotta you know wear white gloves only certain people can have access and (laughs) no you can go in there and see them you do not have to go to Washington DC to find original primary documents Mm -hmm. to do original work Um, whether you're a filmmaker a podcast maker a book writer, a student like myself. At one time I was a student in Bozeman and, you know, I was like, what is there left to research here? I'm sure I could have found something. But what I found in Cascade County and in Great Falls was so rich, it pulled me back. And that's yeah. truly why I live here now is the historical resources um, that were available, um, original resources. So filmmakers, we're calling all filmmakers, yes, please. all writers. We had the Western Writers of America here. Hopefully mm-hmm. they all scheduled some time. But amazing stories that haven't been told mm-hmm. on the big screen, in a book, in an exhibit, just waiting for you to come and experience. I think that's what's so amazing. And, and I think it's almost frustrating because the building is beautiful and it is big But it contains all these things, all these elements. Like you'd want to put up a display about every thing. Every archive. And you can't. No. So it it really is up to the people (laughs) to tell these stories too. Next week I have a woman coming from Louisiana to talk about um, Mary Fields. And Mm. she's writing a book. And, um, you know, there's. I had some folks from Spokane come down that said, we want to do some filming. So, Great. I mean, we have a really quiet building. On Mondays, we're closed to the public, but we're still open for researchers. Um, and we can accommodate things like that. We have... A great space and we have great resources and I think there's a lot of eye-catching detail. Mm-hmm. I did a behind-the-scenes tour of the History Museum and by behind the scenes it's like the places that aren't open to the public mm-hmm. just to see all the, <laughs> the other archive room and things. Mm-hmm. It is crazy and I was telling Christy when we did that I'm like who thinks like this would be stuff mm-hmm. I would find at a house and I'd throw it away and people are bringing it right. to the history museum. There's a value Sometimes there. That happens. And <laughs> yeah. It's really hard when someone brings you grandma's 30 boxes of grandma's stuff and you're They're basically like, sifting through it, looking for the treasures. Um, that can be a real challenge, but sometimes you find 70 yeah. letters, yeah. Um, mm. you know, between a mother and a son during world war two. And I mean, just what a saga. Mm. Yeah. Um, I do want to mention, too, the gift shop. This sounds very like, <laughs> but thank this is you. A, the, yeah, this <laughs> sounds very like, oh, I just want to go shopping. But no, the gift shop is, is impressive. really well done at the History Museum. Not just, I mean, and I'll put a plug. If you're looking for, for gifts for people, yep. whether you're resident or traveling, that's a great place to go. Get on your, you know, holiday shopping early. But it there's just some fascinating things because it's not only done by Great Falls people, but it represents a lot of different eras in history. There's just some really good stuff in there. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really proud of the person, Dana Beyer, who's in charge of our gift shop. And um, I've heard from several people visiting that we have one of the best selections of historic books in the region. Um, and then, of course, there's like artwork, Montana made things, Native American made things, and all things Great Falls. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's one of the reasons we don't, we get every now and again, somebody will stop into the office. and They're like, we'd like to buy some stuff out of your gift shop. And I'm like, no, we leave that to the experts. <laughs> Here's some addresses. Yes. Like we direct people down to the museum gift shop, um, other local businesses, because they do a better job mm-hmm. than we ever could in our small space. Well, mm-hmm. there's so much more background and context to what, yep. what you're getting as well. Well, mm-hmm. and just the inventory there is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And it takes um, some investment. So, you know, I've worked at several museums that didn't afford a museum manager and it was hard to keep up the inventory Mm -hmm. and um, up to date versus we have someone who works part-time and that's all she does and she's done it for 
eight years for the museum and it's a really great gift shop. So really important to our annual budget um, as is membership and uh, yeah, so please do come down with the holidays approaching <laughs> yeah. and find a treasure or um, check out the exhibits for free or come to a second Saturday program for free. So is there a cost to enter the History Museum? There is not. Um, Which is oh, amazing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, because it does take a lot to run a museum. Mm -hmm. And even though we're very modest, we operate on a very modest budget. Um, actually, it's the community that makes that possible. In particular, Owen and Gail Robinson have um, been our donor sponsors to keep the doors open for free. And also the the archives are free, to, mm -hmm. like you said, to research in. Wow. That's, That's just mind crazy. blowing that you have access to all of that for free. Wow. Yes, and it, it does take a village, and uh, mm -hmm. we love when people from out of town, out of state, come to visit. Um, last week, I had a group of farmers um, that were in a leadership trainer, and actually, it was bankers and farmers. Um, it was FCCS, which is some agricultural exchange group. Yeah, and it was so fun to meet people from other areas, and they love our climate. They mm -hmm. love our community. They love the river, the restaurants, and the museums. Being at the History Museum, do you find people just want to ask you every question and then get disappointed? Like if you don't know <laughs> the randomness of that? Well, yeah, because, you know, we have specialties when you're a historian. Right. Um, even when I was at the Art Museum, you know, my specialty was contemporary Native American art. Mm -hmm. And um, my specialty probably won't be that big of a surprise to you is Native American boarding schools, and in particular <laughs> where the Catholics and the Natives mm -hmm. um, meet at places like St. Peter's, but Megan's is breweries and Ashley's is textiles. Um, so we have our specialties, but even if we don't know what we have are indexes mm -hmm. and um, kind of like the old coward catalogs you'd use in the oh, library yeah. that have been developed over decades time. So we can just flip through and of course, it's electronic nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> I still just see it flipping through yep. a bunch of cards. Mm -hmm. and So if there's something you're interested in, come down. If I don't know about it personally, uh, Megan, our archivist, really can dig in and get you started. We get some random questions mm -hmm. here. Um, <laughs> people will call and I'll be like, you know who could answer that for you yeah. better than me? And I always direct them down to the History oh, Museum good. because... You I think got a question, you know, and then you get well, a I got weird a question, question one time about a specific church in, oh. uh, like, in the 60s. And I'm like, I have no <laughs> clue. And yeah. I'm like, you know who might? Yeah. Like, this <laughs> we is would. the yeah. only option on planet Earth, I think, that's going to be able to help tell you. you. <laughs> yeah. And if they can't, then you're out then of you're luck. Then you're out of luck, yeah. Well, the history of the religious West is fascinating, so of course mm. we're collecting that. <laughs> See, you were, you were right to direct yeah. them there. So I'm yes. like, here's who you call. Something that I, just going back to something that's in the gift shop and also available um, at other stores around town, but is a history museum produced, to my understanding, um, books that are done that highlight different eras or different kind of specialties, if you will, within oh, Great yeah. Falls history. They're uh, coffee table books, if you will, mm -hmm. as far as the design of them. But they're really fascinating. And I found one the other day that I had not seen before that I scooped up to save uh, for a gift. So I'll just, you know, lock that away for now because I was trying to do some early Christmas shopping. But it's really fascinating the different the, the books that cover just different, like whether it's an agricultural focus yes. or entertainment focus. And um, yeah, those are just really, really neat books. We do have those. They're great. And then we also have DVDs, which, oh my gosh, did you know? More my style. Yeah. But <laughs> DVDs are quickly becoming obsolete. Yeah. I know. It's like, okay, we need to get these onto USBs yeah, right? quickly. And how long until USBs? Yeah. No. Well, I wonder if, you know, the future of a history streaming service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. Or, you know, Some like your available. podcast. This is yep. so forward thinking. So, oh, yeah, yeah, we have these you. four Feel documentaries. Feel free to come and use the studio anytime yes. to record there History Museum podcasts. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. As long as we yeah. can share it on our yeah. pages. As oh, well. we yeah, love right? that. Well, just, I mean, we could cover, yeah. no joke, we could cover every episode of we're no damn experts with christy telling us a mm -hmm. different story every episode for sure and we <laughs> still wouldn't wouldn't cover right. it all in the yeah the, but the the documentary the great falls documentary that was done is that 
what it's called. Well, there's four I'm of trying... them. There's, oh, there's um, four. Okay. Celebrating Walter Brunig. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. There's Mr. that Walter one. Walter Brunig, yes. There's Great Fall, or sorry, um, Glacier Park Remembered. Okay. Which, yeah, that's Glacier, but we're, of course, interested in the part of the story where Paris Gibson of Great Falls partners yes. with James Hill, the mm. railroad. Um, yeah. And then um, there's the Downtown Great Falls DVD and then mm-hmm. one about the Seventh Ferrying Group. Yeah. So I think it must be the Downtown Great Falls one that mm-hmm. I, I have and have watched. And as someone who's lived in Great Falls for over 15 years now, I was in the news here and all of that, it was fascinating to me and really enlightening on a lot of things that like I think I know our community pretty well and I'm like wow I had no idea about that and any but I think if you are able to watch it before or after you come while you're on your trip it really like lays it just gives you so much more depth I think to your experience here yeah look us up write us we'll send you one yeah um Mm -hmm. you know and I'll send you one for free if you hear this wow. podcast. If Ooh, you mention physically, holy Great Falls, moly, hey. you can get a free DVD. <laughs> nice. Brad Livingston, a huge champion for our community, um, has often said Great Falls is the center of the universe. Uh, <laughs> and I know Wallace, Idaho, lays claim to that, but you know, yeah, we'll it's not challenge far off, you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but as Brad has always said, we're the center of the universe. And, and I giggle because a lot of that really is true. When you start to talk about how influential Great Falls was in all the other areas. If it was not for us, Butte wouldn't have had the power to do the mining. If it was not for us, Fort Peck Dam would have never been constructed. If it was not for us, all of these important moments in the development of our state wouldn't have happened. Including the parks and trees I learned mm-hmm. last month at our second <laughs> Saturday at Troy Hustle. <laughs> Paris Gibson introduced legislation introduced laws that made it so that other communities in Montana could follow suit and have regulations for parks and trees and you know you think about it's not just by chance that you're in this beautiful urban forest right and there's other great cities in Montana but I think we really we We rival them all (laughs) (laughs) we are the model we have so many parks I mean Mm -hmm. this town is full of parks yeah 57 of them yep 50 Mm -hmm. we did an entire podcast episode I wasn't part of that one but yeah you need to get Troy here to talk about his article it is so interesting to listen to well we should because I don't think we did the the we didn't do justice to what the city parks are. And I think even Maddie tried to say all the park names. Uh, like she did as at the end and like fast can. forward wow. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot. And when you think about the founder of our city who was born in Maine and lived part of his life in Minneapolis, he would have seen these things. And oh my goodness, we recently got a beautiful book that Paris Gibson had given his wife, Valeria, that's all about um, North American birds. And it makes mm-hmm. sense that this family that came from a forested area wanted to bring the urban forest to Great Falls. And now you get to drive into Great Falls. And when you get to the top of that hill by the airport, Mm -hmm. see this gorgeous river snaking through town and the tree-lined streets. Yeah, It's an oasis on the prairie. It is is absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And with that is like the perfect end. And I was just going to say, I might be ruining your ending here. I was planning. (laughs) (laughs) It's my first podcast, so I'm lost. I'll I'll save this for the show notes then. So you just wrap up your ending. You can say it. Well, I was just thinking. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I was just thinking about the an itinerary for people coming. So I thought you might be interested in this actually. So okay, if you want to walk through it, if you don't mind walking, you can spend time at the history museum. Walk down the Machinery Row area. You can get coffee from El Banco or a cocktail there at the uh, Mag- at Magpie. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. You walk around the corner. You can stay at Historic Hotel Arvon and get a meal there at Celtic Cowboy. And then you can walk through our downtown and walk over to Gibson Park, one of our city's parks named after our founder. And it's a whole little weekend for you. And and if you have a little extra time, maybe you pick up the walking tour and guide. And the downtown walking tour, yes. And you could go and see the Northside H- Residential Historic mm-hmm. District. The Central Business District. The Railroad, the railroad District. district. <laughs> yes. And it's all walking. And within, you can just park and be done with it for the weekend and I think we all want to do that when we go to a Mm -hmm. place we want to learn and we want to eat well but we also want to come home feeling good you don't Mm -hmm. want to feel like you just sat in your car and gained 20 pounds you want to be able to walk to Mm -hmm. dinner and we have a walkable city Mm -hmm. well in that I'll just make the final plug there for that it is just nice to be able to see 
at the pace your feet take you versus trying to see at the pace a car takes you. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. You just don't get that same feel. You don't get the same experience. You just have a little bit more time to embrace the beauty of the area. And the details that you're not yeah. going to see when you're flying by. Yep. Yeah. And that's the stuff you or your children that you're traveling with remember, you know, remember 20 that years time? later. And I've made that call. I've called my mom and I've said, remember on this one trip, there was this hill and there was a bunch of trees. There were no other trees and there was this building. <laughs> and I think it was in this state. And she'll she'll remember. So I, I'm, I'm fearful of the day her mind starts to slip because <laughs> she's like, oh, it was in this town. And sure enough, that's where it was. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Mm hmm. That's it. I'm done now. I just okay. wanted to thanks mention for, that. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for adding that final mm -hmm. thought. Christy, thanks for being on our podcast with us. It was fun. And I am sad we haven't done it sooner. Because there we go. The full intro to the History Museum. And now we can just schedule to bring back and she can tell us stories while we just sit yes. here and listen. I would love to tell you stories. I have some good ones up my sleeve, you know, <laughs> ranging from that repatriation visit with the Blackfeet yesterday mm -hmm. to what's going to be coming up in the future. I'm so excited. So look forward to seeing, seeing, hearing Christy more <laughs> on our podcast. And we look forward to seeing you in our fabulous community. So until we see your bright, smiling, beautiful, happy face here in Great Falls, we hope you are creating amazing memories with your friends and family wherever you are. We are no damn experts as the recorded claims from Great Falls, Montana covering what you need to know about this amazing damn town. Damn, that felt good.